Hey, you guys. So today's video is being sponsored by one of my favorite online jewelry websites, which is Happiness Boutique. I'll definitely post all their information below for you guys. They have some amazing fashion statement jewelry for a fraction of the cost. Along with that, they do offer free shipping. So make sure you check them out. I will post all of the direct links below. So the first one is their dazzling vintage inspired statement necklace, which I find is absolutely gorgeous and will look great paired with a off the shoulder blouse or off the shoulder dress or even a maxi dress along with that these clear gems that surround the entire necklace are definitely eye-catching so ladies if you're thinking about something that's really glamorized then you'll definitely want to check out this piece along with that if you like something that's just really simple and modern you may want to check out their star statement earrings which features a large intricate design also interlocking abstract shapes which will definitely steal the show all of their jewelry is hypoallergenic. The last bracelet or the last item in this showcase is the glitter cuff bracelet, which I absolutely love the most. This I think is my favorite from the entire collection. This modern yet very minimalistic design is very feminine and I love pairing it with my other cuff bracelet that I also do have from Happiness Boutique. If you love fashion statement jewelry and also very affordable jewelry, check them out i'll definitely link it below for you guys so all the information will be posted below for you guys check them out and i hope you enjoy the video What's up, YouTube? What's up, Divas and Divos? So your girl is back with another Real Talk video. You guys already know it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. The week goes by so freaking quick, okay? So, you know, I do have things to do today, which is edit this video because it's Tuesday, really. But, you know, I already know what day it is, Wednesday. So in case you guys are wondering about this a lovely shirt, now I'm just fucking with you guys. Um, in case you guys are wondering beforehand about the hair that I'm rocking today, listen, the video will be up really soon on the 11th of June. But before I even get into all of that and let you guys just keep guessing and stuff, this is by one of my favorite companies, girl. Mm rpgshow.com. Yes. You guys know, I, I, I have, listen, I'm going to just be honest and say this. Okay. I have fucked with them since their first year. Like they was out since this is their 12th. This will be on my birthday, June 19th, bitches. Okay. So in case you didn't know, my birthday is coming up on the 19th of June. A bitch will be 45. I do have a PO box in case you want to send me something, a card, a letter, whatever, a gift you can do so. But on the 19th of June, 12 years ago is when RPG show started their company. So I have rocked with them for 11 of those years. So they are celebrating their 12th year anniversary. Along with that, so is their affiliate company, sister company, My First Wigs, which will be celebrating their four year anniversary. So, you know, we have had such a great rapport with each other for all these years. And to be quite honest with you guys, when they first started out, I really was very apprehensive about fucking with them because there was like a lot of not that great reviews, but you know, I gave them a chance. They have really evolved over the years, like a million times and they are really ahead of the game. So their lace wigs are like bomb as hell. And I really do like them. Um, they just like kind of like melt in your skin. Like they're so transparent. You can't even see the lace on it. So I do like this one. This is the one that I chose to celebrate their anniversary with them. And I love it. I I wear it straight. It's a lace front. It's so pretty. Um, if I remember the link, I'll definitely put it below. I can't remember if they gave me the link yet because the video wasn't supposed to be posted up, but I know this wig is not 20 inches like the most of them are. I think the longest length I've ever had from RPG was 20 inches, but I'm pretty sure there's got to be longer. So I'm thinking this is like 22 Either way, girl, this wig is bomb as hell. I absolutely loves it, okay? I've been using this new, well, it's not new, but it's new to me. This this hairspray by Got To Be, it's called Volume Maniac, and it, it, has, it says it has dramatic hold. 
So the hold isn't as strong as the Glam Force one that I've been using, but it will hold for like a day. So that's good if you don't want to snatch your edges in real life, snatch them, and you don't really want to wear the wig that long. So it does hold. It does have a good hold. You can still put it up in a bun, hun, and all of that good stuff. But yeah, I did get it from Ulta for $4.99, the hairspray. They have all the got to be hairsprays there at Ulta. I've been telling you guys about and a lot of my videos. Um, I purchased mine online because every time, well, the two times that I did go to two different altars, them bitches were sold out. So I just purchased mine online because it's $4.99 on sale. Um, I can't remember if the shipping was, um, cheap. I know the shipping was cheap. I think it was like four or five bucks. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I've seen that hairspray, that Glam Force hairspray in Target online for like 10 bucks. Amazon, people are asking like $50 and shit for a can of fucking hairspray. So it's ridiculous. So yeah, check Ulta. They have it for $4.99, okay? For any got to be product. But, and the shirt is mad old. This is from Forever 21. You girls, I love Forever 21. I'm going to be forever motherfucking 21. You know what I really do dislike though a lot about people that judge other people for shopping at forever 21 bitches stop saying that oh she's still shopping forever 21 and she's like in her 40s not talking about me but anybody in general that's over the age of probably like 20 something you know y'all motherfuckers think that just because it's called forever 21 means that that shit is just for motherfuckers 21 and under and it's really actually not they have really nice clothes in there they're super affordable and i feel like this just because i'm in my 40s does not mean i got to dress like an old motherfucking lady. Not saying I'm old. However, just because you in your 40s does not mean you cannot wear distressed jeans, legging shorts, um, maxi dresses, you know what I'm saying? Shorts, bathing suits, whatever Forever 21 is selling. Yes. Now, granted, there are some things in there that I would not put on because for one, it's just not my style. Nothing to do with my age, but it just isn't my style. And I just don't think that my body is catered to some of the shit that they put in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really want to walk around with pleather on or fake leather. Like, it's too fucking hot for that. And I don't really care what store sells that. That just isn't my thing. Or like little crop tops because I have a stomach. I have a fupa, a belly, whatever you want to call it. I have a front area. That shit is not flat. Okay. So just to save myself from the embarrassment, I'm not really trying to go outside with a crop top on and my motherfucking gut hanging out. I don't really care who makes it. I don't care if Versace made this shit, okay? I'm not putting it on. But I do like their clothes. They have some really affordable clothes. And me and all of my daughters, we shop there. I think they got like the bomb and shit. And then they have evolved. Plus size is my section. And it still is my section. This is from the plus section. It's size 0X. So I do wear 0X in the plus section, which is basically probably like an extra large and regular size because I ain't never heard of no zero X, but I do like their shit. They got some really nice shit. I just bought this really cute cheetah print dress from there for 10 bucks, bitches, 10 bucks with some matching cheetah sandals. There was a little bit different print, but they were also from forever 21. And okay. So I did get a lot of like, you know, compliments on the dress. Um, on Instagram, I did pair it with one of my um, my Louis Vuitton Never Full bags, which I'm going to show you guys in this video real quick because it's an amazing bag. It's a Never Full bag, um, and I'll post the information, or maybe I won't. I'll just show you guys in another video because the last time I did that, somebody flagged my fucking video and some dumb shit, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. But, fuckers. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's about it. What have I done lately? What have you done for me lately? Um, what have I been doing lately? Nothing but working. I've always work. I'm always working. I'm super busy. I'm enjoying my life. Um, to the somewhat, you know what I'm saying? We all go through shit. We all have issues, um, with family members, kids and shit like that. But you know, other than that, I'm chilling. I know that I have not posted a wig sale and this week would be the third week, but I will have one for you guys this coming weekend because I already have them ready and I'm posting them on the website. It's just that I'm getting so overwhelmed with this stuff. So there'll probably be like a nice amount on there. So y'all just keep, keep in mind that that will go out. So you guys, oh, and I do have a new lighting in case you guys can tell from the glare on my face that I have new lighting. So I have three ring lights 
two big ones and one small desk one that I absolutely am loving okay I love it it really does do like look you guys can tell the difference it makes like a huge well not really right now but well you know it does okay it just does all right so if you guys got a motherfucking real talk that you would like for me to talk about, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you post in the subject line, real talk. And if you want to change the names of those people that you are talking about in the video, like your name is Shaniqua, but you don't really want nobody to know that, so we're going to call you Wanda. You could be like, April, I changed the names in, the, in this email. If you don't tell me that, then 99.9%, 99.99% .99 baby daddy. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, change the names for you. So on that note, let's get into this real talk. Huh? 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 What? Damn. Real trap shit. All right, you guys, let's get into this because I have two of them for you. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, you would like to hear about this. This good stuff. Okay, hold on. She changed the name. Here we go. Good morning, Miss April. I hope all is well with you. I have been a subscriber since your first channel and I love all of your videos. I just love you and your family. So in case you guys did not know, yes, motherfuckers, I do have, this is like actually my third channel. Okay. The first one got hacked. Yep. Really badly in 2012. The second one in 2015 or 16 was taken from me. So, okay. From YouTube and suspended my channel for some dumb shit. So anyway. So let's get into this. You can call me Joy. I am married with two daughters. One is two and a half and the other is still in the womb. Well, we used to live out of state, but once we had our first child, we decided to move closer to our parents. The decision was well thought out by the, <clears throat> excuse me, the decision was well thought out, but the past eight months have been a bit of a struggle financially. My husband was laid off last year and had a hard time finding a permanent job since. On top of that, I found out I was pregnant two weeks after he was laid off. He finally got a great government job in April, but it's only part-time right now. Because of that, I am unable to take my leave from work before the baby comes, which I was looking forward to because I am so tired. <clears throat> and I will be working up until delivery. I work full time and make great money, but maternity leave only covers a small portion of my wage. We decided to take my toddler out of daycare for the summer to save money. Yes, we have to pay for daycare, both because both my in-laws, my husbands and my parents work full time jobs and my mother, well, she's just a mess. Here's the issue with my mother. My mother offered to come over and help with my girls, my kids. Well, my mom is unreliable. She kept my first daughter when we first moved here for about three weeks. It was fine, but we didn't feel comfortable with my daughter being around my mother's husband. He is a child molester. I don't know about now, but, but <clears throat> wait, he is a child molester. My mother's husband is a child molester. I don't know about now, but he used to touch my sister and I when we were kids. My mother found out and that was why they got a divorce in the early 90s. Well, about four years ago, she took him back. It really devastated my family. It took a long time to get our mother and daughter relationship back on track. However, she is my mother, so I forgave her. But we just never mentioned him, and we would never go over there. We had limited interactions. <clears throat> okay, so we never mentioned him. And when we would go over there, we had very limited at react, um, interactions with each other. So basically, her mom's husband, her mom's ex-husband was a child molester. He molested her and her sister. And her mom found out about it, got divorced with him four years ago. She took him back. And, you know, basically their mother relationship was back on track. However, she is my mother, so I forgave her. But we just never mentioned him. And when we do get in and we do go over, we have limited interactions with my mom's husband. Anyway, with my daughter, number two on the way, we have to look into daycare once again. However, it is so expensive, especially with only me working full time. So I considered having my mom keep our youngest and letting our two-year-old continue daycare. 
However, I'm so conflicted because although we have no other options at the moment, I don't want my girls around that man at all. I don't trust him. I also don't trust that my mother will come to my house every day to keep my baby girl. I make too much to qualify for any help with daycare costs, yet not enough to pay for it myself. My husband is hustling at work to keep, um, to pick up hours, as many hours as he can. I will be at home alone with a two-year-old and a newborn, so my days will be very exhausting. My question is, should I let my mother keep my baby girl at her house despite her husband? This situation makes me regret moving here. Side note, when she kept my oldest daughter, we set clear rules that she was never to leave my daughter alone with him and that they were to stay in the living room. Thank you for your time and advice, April. I love you, girl. Picks of my family. So, Joy, first of all, she got this huge belly, okay? And they look so freaking cute. Aww. And the two-year-old is adorable. This is at her baby shower. And she looks so pretty. Like, seriously, this little girl is gorgeous. She's adorable. And your mom is so pretty too, the husband. This is this is what I like to call love. Now, this they're an interracial couple, and I love that because color don't have, like, love don't have a color. You know what I'm saying? You should just love whoever you love, regardless of their skin shade, their ethnic background, their sex, whatever. You should just love who you love. And I love the fact that they are so happy together, and they got this pretty little girl who looks so adorable with her little pretty color hair, so... She cute. They this is like a really a nice couple. So I congratulate you guys. So now you guys got two little girls coming. Who child? Little girls or something else. But anyway, so Joy basically moved Joy and her husband, we're gonna call him Fred. Joy and her husband Fred moved out of state into a state where both of their parents were close and distance, okay? Which is cool because you always want to have family around you for moral support, for just any type of support. It's great to have family around. You know what I'm saying? So they moved eight months ago to a town or state where both of their parents live. Now, first of all, Fred, her husband, his parents, you know, they work full time, so they're not really able to care for their children, their grandkids, because they work full time. Now, Joy's mother, on the other hand, you know what I'm saying? She's just a mess. Basically, Joy and her younger sister um, were molested as a child by her mom's husband. When the mom got wind of this and was told, she divorced her husband. But four years ago, um, the mom took the husband back. Now, this was in the early 90s when the mom divorced her husband, her ex-husband, because she found out that he was molesting her two children. And four years ago, like I said, she took him back. The children, the daughters, Joy, she forgave her because that is her mom. But when Joy and her husband go over to her mom's house, they just have limited reactions with um, her mom's husband. Or I'm not sure if they're remarried again, but they have limited reactions with him because for one, he's a child molester. Now, Joy did have her mom watching her two and a half year old at a time. And she did tell her mom, she set guidelines, she set rules. I don't want her, I don't want my daughter left alone with your husband, the child molester. And I don't want you guys anywhere else in the home, but in the living room. And then sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Joy's mom would probably come over to Joy's house and babysit her granddaughter as well. But she's not really reliable. So she's trying to figure out what is she going to do with this new baby that she's about to have? Should she just allow her mom to watch the baby, even though her mom's husband was an ex-child molester who she don't know it's a child molester anymore or should she find daycare? The daycare is too expensive and so they really can't afford it. So she's contemplating, she's conflicted. Should she leave her newborn baby with her mom and her mom's care when her mom has this man that's living there that is known for molesting children? Joy was molested herself. Let me tell you something. Like Joy said, she don't know if he's a child molester still. Let me tell you something. I don't know about any type of child molestation people like pedophiles who decide like, okay, I got caught. I'm never going to pedophile again. Let me tell you something. What they say, once a thief, always a thief. Okay. Or whatever 
I, I'm not going to take this shit too lightly. They do say, like, once a crackhead, always a crackhead. Once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. That shit can change. They can go ahead to recovery, and they can fix themselves, or they can get help for themselves, and they'll never use drugs again. They'll never drink again. You know what I'm saying? But I can trust that. I, You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Get you that help that you need. Go ahead and fix that drug addiction. Go ahead and fix that alcoholism. You know what I'm saying? You okay now. You don't drink anymore. You don't use drugs anymore. You 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 back to being like a civilized functionable person okay not saying that if you drink you're not functionable but if you are an alcoholic you're not really functionable okay if you're a drug addict you're definitely not really functional either however you know like i said these people could go into programs and rehab and help themselves and get help seek help and better themselves and then come back out onto the streets into the real world as functional human beings okay but they have pedophiles they have programs too for them however i don't think i'm going to really trust them even if they come out and they feel like they fine i don't think i'm going to really trust a fucking pedophile who went to some program and says that he's okay now around my kids like listen that's one thing that you don't drink no more and you get your help but it's another thing when you pedophile and you say you don't pedophile no more. How the fuck I know that shit? And even if you really don't, I don't really think in my, you know what I'm saying, my heart of hearts, my mind, my front mind, my back mind, you know what I'm saying, my full conscious, that I'm going to trust your pedophile ass being around any one of my kids. I don't even want you around me. Not saying that, you know what I'm saying, I'm judgmental towards people, but honestly, let's just be real about this shit, okay? Let's, let's all be real about this shit. We all, there are so many women in the world who have children, men and women. I'm pretty sure that there are 50% of you guys that are watching me that have kids on your own, of your own, regardless of what age they are, regardless, and maybe even grandchildren or nieces and nephews. It doesn't even matter. If you was to find out that someone that you knew was touching children and you found out that they was a pedophile, would you really want them around any young children that you knew or you knew of? Like, let's be realistic, okay? Even if they say they got pedophile clean, I'm not really sure what you want to call it, and they haven't touched children in the past five years, that does not necessarily mean that they don't think about the shit. Just the same way like a drug addict might think about drugs or an alcoholic might think about alcohol sometimes. They could relapse too, but um, I would rather not have someone who has symptoms and is known for pedophiling, pedi pedi pedophilism, or how do you say it? I, I just wouldn't want anyone that is known for touching children around me or my own children. So with that being said, I understand that daycare costs are rising, you know, and there are a lot of people that complain about daycare costing them two and a few hundred dollars a week or whatever. You guys have to realize that daycare is daycare. But these people, this is their these people's job. This these jobs are for these people. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Like People, I, I hear people complain about daycare costs all the fucking time. Like, oh my God, I got to pay $300 a week to put my child in daycare. What do you guys think that is free? These motherfuckers is watching your kids. It's a job. It's their freaking job. Everybody has a job in life. Everybody has a service. Whether you're a prostitute on the street, that bitch is servicing motherfuckers who want pussy, okay? And that's her job, all right? point blank period. There's a motherfucking burger flipper in the back right there. That's their motherfucking job to service people who want to eat burgers and fries or whatever the fuck they want to work or do or eat. You know what I'm saying? There's motherfucking people that do massages. That's their job to do massages for people who want to get rubbed the fuck down. There are people who watch kids. That's their motherfucking job to watch kids. That's what this service is for. Dog walkers, whatever. It's a job. So, you know what I'm saying? You cannot really complain about a job unless you can find somebody that is willing to do the shit for free. However, this is where the issue and the confliction comes in for Joy. Her motherfucking person that can watch her daughter for free or for a discounted rate is her mom. And her mom has a pedophile living with her. Let me tell you something. There is no price on safety. I'm sorry. 
There is no price on your children. We do not gamble with our kids. We do not gamble with our lives. We do not gamble with our safety. Some people do. There are some people that do gamble with those things that I just mentioned. But I, for one, am not not with any of that. And I'm sorry, but if I have any inkling of thought that you've been touching kids, I'm sorry. I would really prefer you to stay the fuck away from me and my, my motherfucking kids. And I say me too because... I know what type of person you are, and I know what type of person I am. And this is the part where I'm going to be judgmental towards you because, listen, this is just me kicking in my high senses and making sure that everybody's safe. So, yes, to a pedophile or whatever you want to call him, I am going to be very judgmental because you've done did some shit that ain't really fucking kosher. You done did some shit that is not humane. You touch children and molesting children. So for that, for me, I'm really not cool with. And for the fact, like, you know what I'm saying? This is just me. I feel kind of, you know, not kind of, I feel bad in general for Joy. Because for one, this is her, this was her body that was touched by her mom's husband and for her to have to go to, into her mother's home and see this same man again it has to be hurtful and it has to be like really traumatic traumatic for her and it may bring back some issues and just for that i don't think in general that i would even want my own daughter around him they have pedophiles have no age limit i don't really think that they do honestly you know it's bad enough that you already touch somebody under an age but to touch someone who is so freaking helpless like a child is like the worst crime ever it's like wow how could you stoop so low as to violate a child who has no, no freaking evil in them at all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like kids are innocent. They have no evil in them. And for somebody to just go and touch something so innocent and pure is just like so sickening. And like, I know this is probably wrong for me to say, but this is just how I feel. And everybody's entitled to their feelings. I feel like as a person who has molested children, like if you are a child molester, I think you should be put in jail and whatever happens to you happens to you. Meaning if you get raped, that's your fault. That ain't nobody fault but your own. Cause if you hadn't done what you did and raped a little child, then your ass wouldn't have been in jail and you wouldn't have got fucking butt bucked. All right. Plain and simple. I just think that it's just really totally disgusting. And I understand that people are supposed to be forgiven and you know all that good shit and your sins are supposed to be washed away but I just feel like some things I just can't get over and just some things I cannot forgive you for you know what I'm saying so me personally I'm sorry but I wouldn't bring my daughter anywhere around my mom's home. If my daughter, if my mom wants to see my child, then she would have to come to my home. And honestly, I really wouldn't let my mom babysit all day. Definitely if she's not reliable. And I just really wouldn't trust her in my home. Only because how you know that man ain't going to show up at your door while you at work? You don't know that. He could be coming over here to bring her something, drop her something off, just say hi. You don't know that. And if you can't trust him... And to the point where you telling your mom, well, y'all have to stay in the living room. Then, honey, if you have to tell your mother, oh, listen, I don't want him nowhere near her. I don't want you leaving him alone with her. I don't want y'all anywhere but in the living room. You really can't dictate all of that because you're not there all the time while your mom is babysitting. You're not there at all while your mom is babysitting. Your mom can run out to the corner store for five minutes and that baby is there. She ain't going to tell you. That baby ain't going to tell you. You think your mom is going to tell you, well, listen, we weren't in the living room today. We was laid up in the bed watching TV with my husband in the bedroom. She is not going to tell you all that. So why even put yourself or your child in jeopardy. You know what I'm saying? Now, when I say put yourself in jeopardy, meaning you might get some type of inkling, or you might get word that, yeah, my mom left him for five minutes alone with my daughter. Or, yeah, my mom went to take a shower, and he had to watch the baby while my mom was in the shower. Oh, yeah, my mom took the baby out the living room. Like, what if you heard some shit like that? You know what I'm saying? What if you and your husband, Fred Joy, heard some shit like that, like your mom did that shit? And the next thing you know, your husband, just goes ballistic. Don't even think before he does his reaction and races over to your mom's house, kicks the door and beats the crap out of your mom's husband. You know what I'm saying? And then your husband goes to jail. It's not even worth 
any of the drama or any of the aftermath. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't never know what can happen. You don't never know what you can do. You'll never know what your husband's reaction could be done, um, can be towards a rumor or any type of just bullshit between your mom and your mom's husband. So me personally, to keep everything at bay and to make sure that everybody is safe, I would definitely just not allow my mom to watch my child, okay, in general. Daycare cost is high, but you know what? It's a struggle. This is what we call real motherfucking life. We have to deal with it the best way we can. You know what I'm saying? I had to pay for daycare at a time, and I get it. It is expensive, but this is what we call budgeting, and this is what we call a sacrifice, and we have to sacrifice in life sometimes just to make sure that we can get ahead, and I'm pretty sure that in the long run, you know what I'm saying, your husband will find something that's full-time because it's a government job, so maybe it will, you know what I'm saying, in the future, the hopefully the near future, they will continue to give him more hours because they can look and see his worth ethic. You know what I'm saying? He's proven himself and he's proven himself to get more hours. But in that time, I would definitely seek daycare for my child, especially a young child. You know what I'm saying? You don't want just anybody watching your baby, especially someone that is known for molestation of, of young children. Like I just find that to just be so repulsive and I just can't stand people like that. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that feels that way but I know in my heart I would damn sure not let you watch my kid please I don't know if I was if I would be able to forgive for that I mean but you know she has a good heart because that is her mom you know what I'm saying and she forgave her, her for taking her ex-husband back but to me I just find it like really hard to take back someone who's touched my child in such a, a negative like immoral way like I just can't I think that you know what I would just struggle paying daycare I I just would have to budget like a whole lot better before I take my child over there and yeah I don't really think that it's like a good idea at all at fucking all you know there's so many things that can happen and the unfortunate part about it is the child won't be able to tell you the baby won't be able to tell you I'll give you a good example <laughs> I never forget this shit. It was my daughter. What's it? Um, it was my daughter, Janae. No, excuse me. My son, Wuzzle, because he was the, I only had three children at the time. So it was my son, Wuzzle, and he had to be like, I want to say like nine months, something like that, or a year old, something like that. Well, my kids, my daughter, my daughter, Tati, and, and Wuzzle, they were going to the same daycare at first. And they were at this daycare um, that was referred to me by a really close friend of mine because her daughter went there. So I put him in this daycare because I'm trying to remember where was my daycare provider at the time. I think she had been on a vacation. My my normal daycare provider had been on a vacation for like a month. That was it. Okay. She was only going to be on vacation for like a month, I think. Um, she was an older person, but she had watched my daughter, Tati, just her alone. And then I had another baby. So we were like family, like close. So I needed someone to watch my um, kids in the meantime. And so I was referred to this young lady. This was a younger woman. Um, to watch my kids by a good close friend of mine. So the cool thing about it was I didn't have a car at the time and she came by and she picked them up, her and her husband. You know, I went to their home and I met them beforehand. You know what I'm saying? I took a cab over there and we had a really good conversation, et cetera, et cetera. She showed me around her home. So the um, they came and they would pick up the kids, which was great. And then I could go, go catch the public transportation to work. So, um, this was like, you know, a long time ago. I think I was working at like Family Dollar or Burger King at the time. So anyway, like within like, I want to say like less than the five days that they were there, the one time Wuzzle, um, the one time the kids were brought home. Now my son Wuzzle, I knew that his diaper wasn't changed because of these certain reasons. The one time, the couple of times that I did notice when his diaper was changed, when she dropped him off, she had the diaper tape so close. You ever see somebody put their kid's diaper on and the tape 
be so close that it's touching. It's like, what the fuck? Are you putting like a waist trainer on the baby? Why you have his diaper so tight? Well, that's how she would do that. She would have the, my son's diaper mad tight. And I hated that. Like, let him breathe. So I knew that his diaper was changed because I don't put them so tight. However, one day she had brought him home and his diaper was soaked and the tape to the diaper was not the way she always normally would put it. It was the same way that I would put it loose. So I'm like, oh, did she not change his diaper? So as I changed his diaper, I noticed that his little butt cheeks had like blisters, like red blisters on them. So I'm like, what the fuck? So then I thought about it and I took him to the emergency room before I even called her. And you know, the first thing that I was thinking, like, who the fuck was my baby touched? This is this is the thing that I'm thinking of. No, when I got to the doctor, the reason, the hospital, the reason why he had little red blisters on his booty is because his diaper wasn't changed at all. Okay. And this was like the second time that I had noticed this, but it, yeah, it was because his diaper wasn't changed at all. So the urine, the urine you know, irritated his skin. So I told her about this. Okay. I said something to her about this and she came the next day to pick up my kid. Now, mind you, remember I said I was referred to her by a really close friend of mine. So when she came, when the babysitter came to pick up my two kids that next day, I wasn't about to let my kids go with them anymore because, come on, you're not even changing my baby's diaper. But on top of that, my daughter had informed me that she don't take my son out of the playpen. He'd be in the playpen for like eight, nine hours all day, and she feeds them peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. There's nothing wrong with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I love a good peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which is for bitch. You're not about to just treat my kids any other type of way. So that next morning after coming from the hospital and figuring out what was wrong, my son and his diaper wasn't changed and having to get ointment and all that good shit. She popped up and, you know, she popped up to come pick up my kids, but she not only popped up with just her children and other daycare kids, she popped up with my really close friend, okay, who referred me to her. Now, she popped up with my really close friend because, you know, like I said, she was watching her daughter, but she was also giving my friend a ride to the bus stop. Now, mind you, she didn't realize, you weren't watching my kids no more. I wasn't going to work today, bitch. I'm good. Why did my friend, who, was, who referred me, she didn't arrive, and when the babysitter came to the door, I was like, oh, we're not going to do this. You're not watching my kids. I told you last night that I went to the hospital. You claimed that you were changing my kids' diapers. But in fact, my daughter told me otherwise. My daughter, it was like, they're a few years apart. So she's like three. She doesn't lie. She was like three or four at the time. Because Wuzzle was like maybe one and a half, two. So we get into this altercation on the porch. Me and the babysitter. Did my so-called close friend get out the porch? get out the minivan and start running off at her motherfucking mouth on my porch and because she referred her and I'm talking all of this shit like girl your daughter is like nine fuck you worried about it boy ain't nobody touching her ain't nobody gotta change her diaper ain't nobody gotta keep her in her playpen you know what I'm saying so long story short the whole moral of this story is this you have to go off of your own gut feeling. You have to make sure that you find the right person or people or establishment to watch your kids. You don't just give your kids to anybody because you cannot afford it. There is no price on safety. There is no price on children, okay? We cannot pay for them to come back to us. We cannot pay to take back their childhood or to give them back their childhood. These are our children, and we have to invest our time and our money and just our just us in general, we have to invest it in our children. And I don't think like, I don't think that it's a safe and a good idea to bring your kids over to your mother's house. You know what I'm saying? Why, if, if you're not going to take the two and a half year old over there, why put the baby, the newborn over there? They both should be treated equally. And this man should not be around children. I don't give a fuck if he didn't molest somebody's kids three years ago. You don't know what the fuck is going through somebody's mind. You don't know if they decide, well, this little girl looks pretty right here. I think I'm going to touch her. You don't know this or this baby is really small. It's not going to say anything. Baby's always cry. I'm going to touch it. Nobody will know the difference. You don't know what goes on in these people's minds. So why even chance this? And why make yourself 
It, um, why put yourself in a really, really uncomfortable situation, a really, really uncomfortable predicament to where you at work all day, every day, along with your husband, wondering and thinking, oh my God, I hope he's not touching my daughter. Oh my God, what are they doing? You know what I'm saying? Don't put yourself through that shit. Why bother? Like seriously, don't put yourself through you no know, unnecessary shit that you don't need to go through. I Listen, me personally, I'd rather struggle with paying for the daycare and making ends meet than keep all the money to myself and struggle with wondering, is my child being safe? That's just how I feel. That that would be my struggle. I'd rather just make ends meet and pay for my kids to go to daycare than fucking sit up at work somewhere being freaking stressed all day because I'm not knowing if my kid is safe around somebody who touches children. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, that's just how I feel. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. So, Joy, no. Keep the motherfucking joy in your life and do not bring those little girls around your mother's husband. It's not safe. It's not ethical. It's not humane. This motherfucker, you don't really know what he's capable of doing. I'm not saying he is. I'm not saying he ain't. But just to be on the safe side and to keep your mind at ease, I'd rather just stress about paying for daycare and, and budgeting versus stress about molestation and anyone being around my kid that is a fucking pedophile. You know what I'm saying? Don't be that conflicted. There, 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 there really honestly should not be no type of confliction with this subject at hand. Like, I get it. Like I said, daycare is expensive. It's a motherfucking job. It's a career for people. People own businesses to do daycare. I get that shit. Bless your hearts who like to watch people's kids all motherfucking day. Because me personally, I couldn't work around a bunch of little kids all day. They would, them motherfuckers would drive me crazy. And I know y'all probably like, but bitch, you got five kids of your own and three grandchildren. Right. Them motherfuckers is mine. Okay. Which means I could whip your ass and go off on you and discipline you but somebody else's kids these little motherfuckers be bad today i don't want to watch nobody's motherfucking kids you know what i'm saying you see all kind of crazy shit in the news these days about how people don't put their kids in ovens people don't fucking let their kids alone because they they can't take it or they want to go out and get drugs or whatever the case or they just want to go get lit and party with their friends you see all type of crazy shit with people and kids and people who watch other people's kids even with daycares i have seen so many different daycare shit situations where they got these cameras or these hidden cameras or these little kids is coming back saying yeah this person did this to me they was touching me or you know saying you got somebody sitting in your house watching your kid and they just can't take the baby's crying so they start shaking a little motherfucker excuse me i didn't mean to say a little motherfucker but they start shaking the baby you know what i'm saying and they hurting the baby or beating on the baby like i cannot stand shit like that you know what i'm saying I get so angry when I see shit on the news about how somebody has killed a little baby because they couldn't take the crying. Motherfucker, walk out the room. You hitting the kid and make and screaming at the kid is really not going to make the baby stop crying, okay? Really, it's not. I cannot stand when I see people do that. Like, get a grip. Get a motherfucking grip, okay? So... All type of crazy shit be in the news these days about people molesting and abusing children. So why put yourself in a situation where you don't know what the fuck is going to happen? I don't give a fuck if that's your mom and her husband. That's your mom. That's great. But that's her husband who has touched you. Girl, please. I don't give a fuck who it was. All right. I If, if I know that you is a child molester, my, 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 my G, my nigga, stay far as possible away from me minds my family and my children and even my motherfucking dog i'm just saying because let me tell you something me personally like i said i'm not about to put myself in that situation and be at work stressed the fuck out and then i think like oh shit I got a feeling I'm leaving work right now. And then you rush over there and everything's fine. Or, oh shit, I got a feeling I'm leaving work right now to go get my kid. I just don't feel right. And then you rush over there and your mom ain't there, but your baby is with her husband. And then what happened? All shit pop off. And then your fucking ass end up in jail somewhere. And then you got to pay more money because you could have just avoided the situation. So, I mean, I, I can give you all type of fucking predicaments that could happen if you leave your kid over there. So just take it from me, sweetheart, Joy. Keep your motherfucking joy and find you a daycare that is affordable. Maybe you can get a discount. I do know this. The YMCA and the YWCA, they have a good daycare. I took Mumsy there. And they do have a discount rate too. So if you have more than one child in there, you do get a discounted price. So 
I would definitely look into going to the YMCA or the YWCA for my children because it's a really great daycare. You know what I'm saying? They do a lot of different things with the children. You do have a discounted rate. You know what I'm saying? It's a good environment. You know that the children are safe. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather my children go to a daycare where there are more children and it's more like a school environment versus an in-home daycare because at an in-home daycare, you really can't, you know watch the children. You, it's kind of like a set thing. So I would definitely want to take my kids to like a daycare setting, like a school setting type of thing. So that way, you know what I'm saying? I feel a little bit more safer, but I would definitely check out the YMCA and the YWCA because they have good discounted rates. And trust me, I know this. I took my daughter Mumsy there and she absolutely, she had a wonderful experience there. It was growth and the reason why I took my daughter Mumsy is there is because Miss Brown, who always watched my children, um, oh my gosh, she's like a mother to me, and I still communicate with her to this day. So she watches my real talk. So I love you, Miss Brown. I love you. And um, she is just like it became like a family thing, and she was always so safe and so cautious, and she was so motherly to my children home cooked meals every single day, like not no peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you know what I'm saying? Home cooked meals. And she, we became family. So she was able to discipline my children and to teach them things. But you know, I have five kids. She watched four of the five of them because my eldest son here had already went somewhere else. So, you know, she got, she got older and as she got older, it, she wasn't able to just do as much as she could with my younger children. So Mumsy did go to her, but after a while I felt like it was best to take Mumsy and put her in another the setting where she was able to just get more enjoyment out of her toddler years. So, you know, that's the reason why I did put Mumsy there. Had nothing to do with my daycare provider, Miss Brown, because she still and she she and I were still close and I still was going over to her house and visiting with her. And I still go see her when I'm in New York. So, um, you know what I'm saying? It's always best to find someone that you can really trust. And I don't know, Miss Brown to me was a blessing. She was like a godsend, seriously, because of the situation I was going through with like other, another daycare provider. She was definitely a godsend and she was definitely a blessing. And I wouldn't give her up for anything in the world. And you know, I hope that there are many more people like Miss Brown out there because with this day and age, you can't trust nobody with your kids. But I will say this, if you cannot trust like a single person, I would definitely put them in a daycare setting that is a public daycare setting, not like no private home daycare, unless it's somebody in your family that you can 100% trust that's reliable. But never gamble with your kids' safety and shit. You know what I'm saying? Kids are worth more. They're priceless, honey. they priceless. Put your kid in a daycare. Fuck your mom's boyfriend and husband or whatever that. And I'm not saying fuck your mom, but on some real shit, leave her the fuck alone. Let her come visit it, your your home. But don't let her watch your kid in your home neither. You need somebody that's like <clears throat> that's reliable. And honestly, your mom is not really reliable in no sources. <clears throat> Excuse me, I think I'm about to choke. Guys out here. So I would really suggest Joy. Not even taking that baby over there. You guys give your opinion on that. But I'm just saying. So we're going to move on to the next. So this diva, she went ahead and titled her real talk, Family Always Begging for Money. Mm. So I'm going to change the names because she didn't. Oh, she did tell me, could you please change the names? Good morning, April. I hope all is well with you and your family. I was hoping you could give me some relationship advice. My name is, we're going to call her Leah. Leah. My name is Leah. Um, My name is Leah. And I've been with Mark. We're going to call him Mark. I've been with Mark since 2012. We have a one-year-old daughter named Jack. Um, we have a one name. We have a one-year-old daughter named Jamika. Okay. Cool. Me and Mark, uh, that's what's his name, right? Me and Mark are both in the army stationed in Oklahoma. He is currently a drill sergeant. So a lot of the time it's just me and my daughter or our daughter. I am on my way out of the active. I am on my way out of the active army, but we'll be switching to the army reserves. Mark was able to get his next assignment in my hometown back in North Carolina. And we will be moving there in the end of August. With Mark's drill sergeant time coming to an end, we have been able to spend more time together, and I'm so thankful for the family time. We plan on going to the courthouse to get married before we move. Then we, ha then we have a celebration later this year. Okay, but I'm starting to feel some type of way. 
His family members are always asking him for money and it seems that he can never say no. I can tell that he's stressed out from this and it pisses me off because it affects our relationship. I never really cared for his family because after I had our daughter, I felt like they would try to make me feel guilty because we wouldn't come and bring the baby to see them. They lived in Mississippi nine hours from Oklahoma and it's not like we don't have jobs. We have active jobs. I ended up blocking his mom and his two sisters from my social media because I didn't appreciate them posting pictures up of my daughter as if they had a relationship with her. My parents provided a lot of stuff when my daughter was born. My husband's family provided nothing. Um, well, not her husband, but I'm just calling her that. Him. My, par my parents provided a lot of stuff when my daughter was born, but Mark's family provided nothing. Though I do understand that everyone has their financial issues, another thing I didn't like is when his parents questioned my daughter, where my daughter had gotten some gold bracelets from she had on in a picture, they had the nerve to say, well, they better be real gold. It even got to the point of where they would text me to get in touch with my husband, Mark. It's not like they didn't know he has a busy schedule and doesn't have the time to be on his phone. I told him straight up that I don't care for his family at all. We're about to go through some financial changes ourselves with me switching to the Army Reserves and trying to find a decent job. Mark also has two other kids that he pays child support for. So I don't understand, I don't understand why his family thinks he can just give cash whenever. I told him that it's okay for him to say no because I mean what would they do if he didn't have the money? I just don't know what to do because I don't like how it's affecting our relationship. What do you think of the situation? Please help. So basically, Leah and Mark have been together since 2012. They have a one, they have a daughter together who is one years old. Okay. Um, Mark is an active drill sergeant in the army, and Leah is about to go off of active army duties and go into the reserves. So, which means she'll have to find a decent job. Now, mind you. Leah's family, her parents have given and devoted a lot of things to their one-year-old granddaughter. On the other hand, Mark's family has gone, done nothing. On top of that, Mark's family, they do shit for the baby, but they constantly dig it in Mark's pockets, okay? And then when they do comment on certain situations like pictures that the baby is in Mark's family, Mark's family is basically like, oh, well, the jewelry better be real or she better have this or she better do that. Or, you know what I'm saying? They always got to put in their two cents, but they ain't really putting in two cents. You understand what I'm saying? Hmm. So Lee is really getting fed up because next year they just, they have planned on getting married. So that way they could be like a a family family, like a unit unit, which is nice. I Listen, y'all been together since 2012, bitch. It's seven years. Y'all is legally married in my eyes, okay? That's your husband, okay? But here's the thing. Leah's like, Mark don't know when to say no. I'm going to tell you this. First of all, I don't mind loaning money, like, on some real shit. I, I don't mind loaning money. But here's where it starts to be annoying to me. Okay. And I'm not trying to sound greedy or anything like that. But I just feel like this. When you start loaning money to people and they constantly keep asking you the same people, honey... As long as you keep telling them yes, they're going to keep asking you. Now, when you say loan, is it official loan? Like meaning the motherfuckers is giving it back? Or is it the word borrow and they don't give it the fuck back? Because that's the one that pisses me off the most. When someone says, can I borrow to you and I'm going to pay you back and your motherfucking ass be sitting around waiting for decades to get that shit back. Like, didn't you just borrow $500 from me? And now you asking me to borrow 100 You didn't even give me that shit the fuck back. But you know what's so crazy about it? Family be the ones who do that a lot, the most, I've noticed. Like, 
And I'm just saying this from personal experience, you guys. From personal experience, you be loaning money to family members. And it's like, why do you keep asking me? You didn't even pay me the fuck back what you've owed me. Or when you did pay it back to me, you gave me the shit back in increments. And it took you a motherfucking whole year to pay me back that shit. When it took me five minutes to give it to you. Less than five minutes. And bitch, I didn't give it to you on a layaway plan. I'm saying layaway plan because you're giving it back to me in increments. You're paying down on the shit. Bitch, you didn't lease my motherfucking money. You didn't rent my motherfucking money. I gave it to you all at one time. So I would, I, I, I just can't. Like, I hate to loan somebody some money and they want to give it back to you piece by piece. Like, sometimes it's acceptable, but when you do this shit constantly or not at all, it's like, you know what? I, I'm not fucking with you. I'm not loaning you shit. Take, for example, and I know y'all probably like, but that's your kids. Listen, my kids, five of my kids, three of them are grown, whole grown ass adults, okay? And, my eldest, he got a job. He got a girlfriend who got a job. They got a baby together. Like, I don't mind loaning you money sometimes, but we're not going to take advantage of April and feel like, oh, because she got money that we're going to dig into her pockets. Let me tell you something. Don't email me or net or text me asking me to borrow $50 when I got a Western Union that, which will end up being $62 or $63 because I got to pay Western Union like $13, $14, $15 $15 just to transfer the money. I'm not about to... You know what I'm saying? Like, that was like my last message, my last text message. I, my son texted me to borrow $50. He lives in New York because he doesn't want to ask his girlfriend. Y'all got two motherfucking babies together. Okay. Y'all both got jobs. That's your girl. You getting pussy from her every night. You better ask that bitch for 50 bucks. Not saying she's a bitch because I love her dearly. You know what I'm saying? I love her to death. And I know why he's not asking her because she be budgeting her money. And she ain't all about that splurge and shit. So she is very, very well budgeted, okay? And she keeps account for her money. And she's very responsible for her shit. So she ain't trying to be, like, throwing money away. He just don't want to go to her because he just don't want to hear her mouth. And I respect that. You know what I'm saying? She had to put me on that shit. However, it's one thing to borrow but it's one thing to just constantly borrow. Like, you cannot keep going to the same person always borrowing, borrowing. That just shows me that you ain't got none of your shit together and you ain't planning on getting your shit together. And as long as I'm going to loan it to your fucking ass, you're going to constantly keep asking me for it. And you're right. It's not, there's nothing wrong with saying no. Trust me. I was a type of person, and I still am, where I hate to tell my children no. Like, if they ask me for something, I don't really like to say no to them, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like this, if I got it, then I'm going to give it to you. But there comes a time and a place, even though you feel this way, and you are always there to support your kids, and you feel like if you got it, you want to support them. Like, I know they can't really afford it right now because they're not financially stable, or they're not budgeting their money correctly. So, okay, I'm going to give it to them. But here's the thing. When you keep doing that, shit that's not helping them none it's definitely not helping them none because as long as they can rely on you to give them five ten twenty fifty dollars whatever the case may be is and even if they do pay it back it's still not making it responsible because listen it's a loan if you was to budget your money better enough then you wouldn't have to constantly keep coming to me for this shit and i'm sorry but i really don't like money being taken from my account and having to wait for this shit to come back to me i and i definitely don't like to be told oh i'm gonna pay you back when i get my taxes bitch that shit passed already I ain't trying to hear that shit. Like, I, no, I didn't give you tax money, so I'm going to need all my motherfucking money back at one time. That's the one thing I hate when people be like, well, when I get my income taxes, I'm going to pay you back. I just put a laughing face. Like, really? I'm so, I'm supposed to wait like five months from now for my motherfucking money? Am I getting a brain fund? Am I getting a tax refund? Because I'm just like, <sighs> yeah. Listen, let me tell you something. Okay, Leah. And I say this enough times. Family could dig you in the ground. Yes? Hello? I thought somebody was knocking at my door. Family Family could, I thought that was Tinky. Family will definitely 
family can definitely put you in a hole. Okay, they can bank. They can bankrupt you. They 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 can definitely bankrupt you. All right, they can. And they don't even, it don't even have to be a real bankrupt. They could just take enough from your pockets to where you add that shit up and you'd be like, I spent like what on this motherfucker? Let's take, for example, my son Wuzzle. You know how I tell you guys that motherfucker is always in some shit. He stay in some trouble or he just be doing some dumb shit. Now, you know, um, recently his best friend passed away at the beginning of um, May. On May 3rd, unfortunately, he passed away, which makes a month ago to this day. Well, over a month ago. Yesterday, the 3rd of June, would have been was, was a month. Okay. And in the beginning, my son was seeming like he was taking it okay. You know what I'm saying? I, but it was like striking me as odd because, you know, when people grieve, I just expect everybody's supposed to cry and be taking it like I did and so it really bothered me a lot that he was just so reserved about it later on and I wasn't but it it showed up it popped up his 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 pain finally came out like a few days on Memorial Day when I had to go the fuck off on him but I had to go on from him on a, for multiple things, okay? And one of them was about my fucking money. Like, first of all, he doesn't work anymore, you know, and that's his own fault. He had a really good job at Walmart. But if you know Call No Show on enough times, then, sweetheart, you're not going to have a job. And on top of that, they've given him a lot of chances. And, you know, he has seizures. So, you know what I'm saying? They understood, but a lot of those incidents that you didn't call and show up, but they didn't have nothing to do with no seizure. So when he did have a seizure, you know, I made sure that he brought his paperwork to let them know this is where I was at. But so, you know, like I said, he doesn't have a job right now, but you grown, you'll be 21 on the 12th of June. Okay. His birthday is a week before mine. I ain't got to pay for your hair to get done, sweetheart. But I overheard him talking in the backyard with my husband complaining now mind you my son didn't know i was in the kitchen complaining because i wasn't gonna loan him 25 dollars. i can't loan you something if you can't give it back you ain't got no means to give it back and on top of that i just loaned you money the day before so what you get mad for that you can't get your hair done but he got upset because i didn't want to loan it to him but my daughters get that oh she spends hundreds of dollars she spends a hundred dollars on each one of their heads um to get their hair braided. I heard all of this shit while I was in the kitchen, honey. I was like, honey, where? So the back door was open. The, the sliding door was open. So I just stuck my head out there in the middle of him conversating. My husband was just standing there looking really confused. Like, what the fuck is you talking about, son? And I was just looked and I smiled. And I did like that. I got you. So then he came inside. He was like, I wasn't talking about you. Yeah, you were fucking talking about me. I stood in that kitchen for like five minutes and heard everything you said. You were talking about me. So we got into this argument. Well, he didn't get into an argument. I went off, basically, and let him know, this is my motherfucking money. I don't give a shit if I wipe my ass with it. You got a lot of nerve to be standing outside talking about how everybody else's hair, everybody else's hair in this house look nice except for yours and how it's not fair that I could pay $100 per daughter to get their hair done, but I can't loan you $25. Man, I heard all of that shit, and this was my words. First of all, I don't got to give you shit to get your motherfucking hair done because you was a grown-up, you an adult. This is an 11-year-old that you talking about her hair and a 16 year old my daughter's 17 now and you're gonna stand here and talk about how i pay for their hair to get done when you are an adult and not to mention i just loaned you i just gave you some money yesterday and if you want to talk about everybody else's hair around here look good um everybody else out around here don't need to get bailed the fuck out of jail neither okay i just gave them four thousand eight hundred and thirty four dollars uh about a month and a half ago to get your or a month and a half ago for a month ago to get your fucking black ass out of jail okay bailed you out of jail so i know you ain't talking about that now i gotta sit around here and wait for months to get my motherfucking money back because i had to bail you out of jail and let's not talk about a year and a half ago what i had to fucking pay ten thousand dollars was your bail and i had to give them three thousand of it just so that way you could get the fuck out so let's not talk about what people do around here Okay, don't talk about my money. And this is the issue that family has. It seems like when they see that you got some money, 
And they don't even have to be a lot. They feel like they entitled to ask or they, they feel like they entitled to get some of it. Here's the thing. You ain't entitled to my motherfucking money. And when I say you, I mean a person. I could be um, motherfucking Leah right now. And I'm talking about his family, her husband's family. You ain't entitled to my husband's money just because he makes money and you don't. Just because we blood relatives don't mean that you entitled to shit. I stay trying to tell people this shit. Listen, just like with friends, you got to treat them or family members the same time away, same kind of way. You have to have your limitations. When you constantly keep saying yes to motherfucker, they're going to constantly keep being in your pocket. And it hurts sometimes to say no, but you know something? Sometimes you got to say no for your own fucking sanity, your own sanity, okay? When I fucking say no, I mean no. And now I am fine with saying no because I had an issue with saying no to my kids. And I started seeing this within myself. And I started seeing like, y'all motherfuckers ain't even paying me back. And now I'm missing $100. I'm missing $1,000. I'm missing $5,000 from my account because I'm constantly helping you guys out. But when I need something done, don't nobody around here fucking seem to do it. I don't give a shit if it was fucking keeping the rooms clean or cleaning the bathroom. When I need something done, y'all think that I'm speaking a foreign language and y'all don't understand me. So my thing is this, I have learned to say no because it's for my own sanity. The way you get it or how you get that $25 or whatever you need to borrow is how you motherfucking get it. But there's a time and a place for everything. And this time you need to learn how to be responsible with your shit. So what I would do, Leah, is I would have a good conversation with my husband or my boyfriend or whatever you want to fucking call him and let him know, listen, Family will drag you down and they will use you up until you ain't got nothing else. And then they will move on to the next person that they can get something from. So take it from me and just learn a lesson and learn how to say no. Money will fuck up a relationship. Don't let the money fuck up your relationship because you feel in some type of way. I get that, but don't feel some type of way and don't feel no negativity, Leah, towards your boyfriend, whatever you want to call him. Don't feel any type of negativity towards him. It's not him that's borrowing. It's his family members. And I understand that you are probably getting aggravated with him a little bit and on edge because he is constantly loaning the money. But you have to realize he doesn't probably have that much negative bones in him. He just probably is a person who wants to help everyone out. He just probably wants to be there for everyone. Friend, foe, family member, whatever. He's just probably one of those type of people who are giving. If he's got it, he's got it. And you got it. But those type of people who's got it and he feels like they have it, you got it, those type of people are the vulnerable ones. And so you have to realize, Leah, there's probably a way to approach him and to come at him. But being a negative, don't do that because he's just a giving person. However, giving people do get taken advantage of. And sometimes we have to let them see this from a positive approach. Like, listen, I understand that you are willing to help your family members, but sometimes you got to think about yourself and are you willing to help yourself and our family? We got to help each other. We need help over here. We got to work together. We doing this alone. We need the financial stability. Your family members are grown. They got to get this and they got to do this shit on their own time. They can't constantly be having a hand out to you. You know what I'm saying, Mark? You got to learn how to say no. I don't got it like that. Sometimes people just can't say no. And you know what I start doing? If you feel like you just can't say no, make up a motherfucking lie. Like if somebody said, can I borrow? I'm sorry, but I don't have it this week. It's not really a lie. I don't have it this week. I'm sorry, but if I had it, I would give you, but I don't have it this week. I'm sorry. And just leave it at that. That's the easiest way to say no. A bitch like me would be like, I'll just not even answer the text message or the question. You see that shit was red and I just want to answer you. Like if you be like, oh, can I borrow $50, mine? Hmm. <laughs> or if I hear you talking shit about me and talking about how I spend my money, then that's when I'm going to flip the fuck out. But I just honestly feel like, Leah, you just need to have a conversation with your so-called husband or husband-to-be. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't feel negative towards him, but I'm telling you guys, if you have to loan money to the same person constantly, you have to say no. You have to learn to say no because that person, regardless if they're paying you back or not, you know what I'm saying? 
they see you as an ATM. They see you as, oh, I'm going to go to April and ask her to borrow some money because she always got it. And I know that I could pay her back in increments. Bitch, please. Pay you back in increments. Let me tell you something. I have, I, I don't know how much money is owed to me by my kids, but I just say it like this with my kids. Those are my kids. I'm not going to badger them for the money that they owe me. If they tell me that they want to give it back to me, that's great. My son, he, uh, my eldest son in New York, he has borrowed money from me before. You know, I had to bail his black ass out of jail too one time. Thank God it wasn't for anything stupid, but well, he could at least fucking fix his license. You know, he had a couple of tickets and, you know, he just was worried about getting back and forth to work, which is still not an excuse. But yeah, that was the final ticket getting pulled over without a driver's license. So a suspended license. So they put him in jail. I bailed him out from over here. You know, I had to call a number and I bailed him right out and he gave me the money back. He paid me back like the next week. He gave me half. He had to pay back increments. He tried to give me the whole entirety of it. And I said, no, I will not accept it. You pay me half of it back. That's great. Take the other half and go pay that ticket that you owe so you can get your license back. So I do things like that. I'm not always saying like pay me back. If like my son, I lost $3,000 a year and a half ago for a bail. And I didn't lose it. It was just either it was $10,000 bail. It was either I give them um, a piece of property, like put my title up to my truck, or I give them 10 Gs. I'm not about to go in my account and take $10,000 out and wait for the shit. That's, that's, no, 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 no. And I wasn't about to put my truck up, you know what I'm saying, either. So I found a bill bondsman who doesn't do like the 10%. You had, I had to pay him $3,000 cash for him to bail him out. That $3,000, I was not getting it back. So I lost that because it was his stipulations and how his his balance worked. So that was cool with that because I didn't really want my son in it. But I lost $3,000 and my son was supposed to pay me back in increments, like, you know, $100 a week from his check or every other week when he got paid. I probably got one payment and that was it. So you see what I'm saying? You have to be really wise because the same people that constantly keep borrowing money from you, they have an agenda and their agenda is to ask you for the money because they don't feel like budgeting it. I hate when people want to spend their money and then want to spend your shit. Like, I ain't a stingy person. I'm a very giving person. But you know what? I ain't naive either no more. And I said, no more, bitch. I ain't naive no more. So, honey, stop loaning your shit. Tell your husband to stop loaning his shit and get it together. Family be the ones that drag you the fuck to the hole. So on that note, guys, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to Target and get some candy. I love you. Stay deep and deep delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up, leave your comments below and your experiences and, you know, let them know what you think. I love you and I'll see you guys soon.